so there we don't want to pray that thy blood was shed for me, that thou bidst me come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come, hallelujah. Almighty God, our gracious Abba, the great Yahweh, dwell between the cherubim, the Lord of hosts, is in it. Shine forth, let the earth be filled with your glory. Let your glory rest upon us, your light shine over us. Be thou exalted, Father of the heaven, be thou exalted, Father of the earth. Be thou exalted, Father of the heaven, let thy glory be above the clouds, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, you are the great El Shaddai, the great Yahweh, the great Elohim, the great Adnan, the great Hashem, the great, great Abba of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Mashiach, Emmanuel, the great, and to whom he said, sit on my right hand, till I make the enemy thy footstool, the Lord sent for the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Oh, Lord, in the midst of thy enemies, Father, we thank you, great Elohim, King of kings and Lord, Lord, we thank you for another Shabbat, thank you for another open your Bible program. Oh, God, that we're counting down the days, my God, counting down the days, hallelujah, amen, my God, hallelujah. Said in the days of these kings, my God, even the days of these kings, Lord, and he said that, that would be the word for this to this week, my God. Sometimes I don't know what it is, and um, the whole week I'm searching, searching until the last day before it, and you tell me this is it, my God. He said, This is what it is. Oh God, in the days of these kings, hallelujah. Uh, we are counting down the days, counting down the days, my God. Counting down the days and the hours and the minutes, my God, and the seconds, my God. We are in dangerous times today, my God. At one said, in times like these, we need a Savior. We need an anchor and be very sure. The anchor holds and grips. <coughs> Excuse me. And a solid rock. Shining through the great. Excuse me, Father. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your favor. Exalt your name today, Father, we pray. As we honor your matchless and glorious name of our Father, we thank you that your God and beside you there is none other. He said, you said, I'm God, and I don't know of any other God of our Father. And even Nebuchadnezzar had to be humble because he taught himself was a God, himself was a God, but he got to the point where he said that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Amen. He said, he ruleth in the armies of heaven. And none can stay his hand and say, What doest thou, my God? And we see day after day, moment by moment. Amen, our Father. One said, But my wild mortals rise and perish. God endures unchanging on. Hallelujah. Amen, our Father. Amen. And so we thank you for your grace and your glory. Amen, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, your shelter. From the stormy blast and our eternal home. Amen of our Father, and the shadow of thy throne, thy saints of God secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and thy, our defense is sure. He also said, Time like an ever rolling stream, be as all its sons away, they fly forgotten as a dream. My God, so it is, Amen. They rise up, they do all manner of things upon the earth, but then they perish and they go on to meet the judgment. When the King of Kings shall sit on the white throne, my God, and even the, the, the dragon has been here and his cronies with him, the devil with him over, over all these centuries, my God, seeking to destroy men. But they also will come to their judgment, my God. I tell you, your word never said that the dragon is going to appear before the judgment. It never said that any of these devils will appear before the judgment because they are already judged. Amen. From the time they were cast out of heaven, they are just waiting. Amen. He said, the angels that sin, you cast them out into chain the hell. I mean, chains of darkness reserved until the day of, ju of, of the judgment. And so the judgment is upon the, the human beings who have followed the devil, our father, and we were cast into hell. Amen. With the devil, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. Father, we thank you today that we are the children of, of Abraham. We are the children of, of, of Adam. Our Father, we have the privilege that we can call upon you as saying, Abba Father. Father, we worship you today. Times of trouble, my God, times of trouble. But believe me, my heart is not troubled because I'm resting in thee, my God. And times of trouble are wearing on. And some people think it's just going to continue like this, but God, it's going to come to an end. 
it must come to an end. Otherwise, as your word said, except those days should be shot, then no flesh should be saved or alive, Jesus said. But he said, for the elect's sake, you have shot in the days, my God. It was written before time began in the, in, 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 um, in the record that you set up. Before you turn on the time clock and you set the alarm, my God, amen, that all of these things, you set it, that the alarm should go off before all the earth be consumed by the wickedness of mankind. And Lord, we see even, even what happened this week. Oh God, I pray your mercy and blessing for the people of Ukraine, children, babies, and uh, mothers, and nurses, and doctors, my God. I don't know, I can't even explain it, my God. I know I have my own opinion of what I think they should do, but God, you know that the devil is using them as a scapegoat to cause the affliction and the war, the trouble to start in their country that is going to spread all over the globe and turn the whole world ablaze, my God. And so they are the ones who are suffering it first. But now we know that everybody will be suffering it somewhere or another and it's going to be deadly. But I pray for those who are your children that they prepare their hearts. And your word said, make a call and election sure. Looking up into heaven, amen, for our redemption draweth nigh. So Father, I pray we're not just time. Bless us that we do this study. And make us to live for thee. Cause us to rise up before the establish of going out the coming Grant that the purpose you have for our lives are accomplished in us for time and eternity of our Father. And I pray that you cover under the blood of shed a great turtle lamb. Cover your mighty wings of a great turtle lamb. Go before us as a pillar of fire by night, pillar of fire by day. Save us in your kingdom. When our Lord shed a great shall come in joy. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alright, I'm going to try to sing a song here and then we'll get into our study in the prophet of Daniel. Amen. We're going to talk about in the days of these kings. And we also, um, as we follow up from last week's study, um, last week's study, which we spoke about troublous times.
started singing the good light of losing my wife, but I always trusted the Holy Ghost and you know, to take care of me. Um, I've been shouting so much. Um, I'm not a person to shout. I don't like having to shout. I start shouting like uh, my head. But when I'm praising God in my voice, <laughs> you know, a lot of shouting, I'm telling you. I, I do shout a lot. I'm shouting a lot more than I used to. When I'm worshiping, I'm shouting a lot every day, morning and day and afternoon, night. I mean, shout my car, shout. I'm shouting a lot. I'm shouting a lot. I'm shouting a lot. And I know I'm shouting, shouting for Jesus. I'm shouting for victory. I'm shouting for eternity. For eternity. Um. Uh, the Bible said. I'm going to read that verse before I even say anything more. Let's turn to Daniel 12, verse 44, and uh, <coughs> that verse was in the study last week. And, um, Dan not Daniel 12, Daniel 2, after uh, the, when Daniel interpreted the dream, and when he told Nebuchadnezzar's dream, interpreted it, he said, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left unto, uh, to, other, to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. <clears throat> well those of you who get daily communication from me um, you've heard me speak about what's going on and you have uh, you're more up to date with people who than people who have to wait every week to hear from me. But I mean, if you want anything every week, you can just drop me a, a, a little message um, in my thing and tell me you want a message from me every day. I mean, every day. And I'll add you to the list. I have like about 70 people on the list already. So, all right, so um, I think it's 68 or 69, somewhere there. Now, um, you, if, it's important for you to follow what's going on. See, a lot of things, um, they can hide from you, but they can't hide things from you about war. So I'm saying, you can hide, just say, well, a man is sick, but you can't hide if a man is dead. You gotta hide that, because even a dog would come and sniff, realize he's dead. All right, the baby would come and like, you know, you can hide that, okay? And that's the thing about war, war brings death. Now, what happened this week, it was not that a nuclear bomb was dropped upon somewhere on the earth, but what was happening this could have been worse, was worse than dropping a nuclear bomb. Because for those of us who are old enough, you must have heard about Chernobyl um, in, this, in the past Soviet Union where um, the, 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 the nuclear reactor started to leak. And people, they said within I think about 17 miles I think, up, to, up, up there, just for one little leak had to be removed from your houses. Nobody lived there until this very day. They said, uh, um, there's radiation there, there's, there, there's problem there until this very day. And that happened, I think, was in the 80s, right? Figure out what I'm talking about? I think I was in the 80s, right? Yeah, imagine how young I was at the time, but I was old enough to know what was going on with that. So you know the name Chern Chernobyl, right? Wasn't a noble thing, though, right? <laughs> My God, what a disaster it was. But that was just a leak from a nuclear plant. Now, um, the Ukrainians have their nuclear reactor, which they say is the, I think they say the biggest one that's in Europe, okay? You know, the Soviet Union was so big that it, part of it was in Europe and part of it was in Asia, right? The bigger part was in Asia, the bigger part was in Europe, and part was in Europe. And um, this is really what they want to get back, that wide empire, which is like from 
see to shine and see. Um, it's see to shine and see, but much wider, bigger than the United States. We have Atlantic to the Pacific, yes, but nothing the size of what the Soviet Union had, right? Um, USSR, that's what it was called, Union of Soviet so so Socialist Republic. And this big reactor they had now, they started shelling it, throwing tanks were firing it, firing it. And people are saying, why would you do something like that? That means you want the thing to explode. The explosion that it would create. I'm saying, remember that, I said in Chernobyl, one leak from the reactor, right? Caused people to have to be removed from their houses. I think let's say 17 or maybe about 20 miles away from it. One leak. Are you with me? didn't explode. So you can imagine what this would happen if the thing had exploded. And so they kept shooting at it, shooting at it, got a fire, and eventually they took it over. But you would say to yourself, well, I mean, come on. If you invade a country and you want to take over a nuclear reactor, why would you do something so dangerous to be shooting at it? Because no matter how you talk about precision guided missiles and whatever it is, they miss all the while. They say they send it after a military target and it end up in a civilian target and blow up people. Sometimes end up, you know, because these things are. Right? The elements could cause it to whatever. Okay? But as I said already, that when these things begin to happen, angels of God will be right here. Angels of the devil, will, the devil will fall in over here to destroy everybody up here. But, but God's angels will be here. They're here already anyway. And God has given them commission. Right? God has given them commission. As I told you, when I had a vision I saw in heaven, I didn't know what the angels were saying, believe me, because I speak in a heavy language, but I know they were conferring and God spoke to his son and he, he, he crowned him and told him what he wanted him to do and the angels were there talking to each other about, you know, what, what God wants them to do. So they know what they are supposed to do. And many of these things they know from millennia before the world began, okay? what was about is going to happen. So they're going to be shutting down some of these things. I'm saying? Because if that the reactor had exploded, then they wouldn't even need to buy a real war. You get me? This war, the war would have been over. Not only would Ukraine have been over, but other nations would have been over too. Because of the the explosion that would come from it. Now who would do something so reckless and dangerous? Right? Why would you do something so reckless and dangerous? The war would have been finished already. Because the Bible, you know, history tells us about the Japanese who were in line with Hitler and they were fighting. They were dangerous. The Americans couldn't deal with them. And so they planted and said, well, we have this atomic bomb and we're just going to drop it on them. And when they dropped the bomb, what happened? It was over. It was over. And for that nuclear reactor to explode it would have been worse than those two atomic bombs where they dropped there. And, 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 and you have to understand what's going on. Because my teacher told me, he said that, when America was dropping those bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they didn't tell the whole army, you know. He said there were pilots out there flying the plane and didn't know what was happening until they, some, I guess, made radioactive material. I don't know what things started to come in their direction. And afterward, they found out that 
their own nation had dropped atomic bombs. It was, you know, top class, I mean, what do you call it? Uh, secrecy. It wasn't told to the army. It wasn't told, it wasn't told. They didn't know. It was only the top brass, I guess, maybe knew exactly what was going to happen. And they fly their planes over there, and while they're flying it, they assemble the whole, I guess, the, 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 the thing that's supposed to, um, the ignition thing and whatever and so forth. And, and what I understand was that when the thing fell, the mushroom, the, 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 the cloud of whatever came right up to, to the men who were in the plane, who dropped it. And they were shocked. They were saying, like, what? What have we done? Like, Really? Because they never see anything like that in their lives. So they went on a mission not knowing even how dangerous our deadly was. And they themselves almost got killed by the very same bomb they dropped. Okay? Now this week I, I saw on the news, I said that um, they saw a plane in, I don't know, North Carolina, I remember one of the states here, they said it is new proof. I guess that's the kind of plane where they can fly and drop bombs and the pilot is secure or something inside of it. But it doesn't matter if it's a plane and use engine, the engine can fail, somebody can shoot it down, something can happen to it. Right? They are playing in America, I had a plane they call the Wide Hog. They said that plane is, is deadly, I'm telling you. You can shoot at it and shoot at it and shoot at it and it still keeps flying. Which they said they had retired it, but they had to bring it back because it's so tough, right? So right now they're in Europe, American B-52 bombers are flying and soaring the old scar in the air because the tensions are very high. They're not, it's really interesting, you don't know what's going on. Now. The tensions are very, very high. So when you hear the president talk about miscalculation, they're talking about that, well, if I figure that you want to do something, my only solution is to do it before you do it. My only chance, I should say, my only chance. And so, but then suppose you never really meant to do it. And, and you never did it. Then I'm going to say, hey, well, I, I overreacted. But suppose you really meant to do it, and I didn't do it, then I'm going to suffer the blow. And I can't recover. So it's a dangerous situation we are in. Right? A dangerous situation we're in. And if you don't know about that thing with the nuclear act, that you're not following what's going on in the world. But you better follow it before you get blown up and you don't have an idea what blow you up. Okay? That's what I'm saying to you. Because, that's it. I guess maybe, you know, you might be in a plane and you're sleeping and it crash, then you might never wake up or something else again. Somebody who's awake and saw the crash. I don't know, but maybe that person get a chance to call their loved one and say goodbye. That's what happened with 9-11. When people were on the plane and knew it was going to crash, they call their family and say goodbye or whatever. They fought with the arm, the men who were on the, on the plane, the one who was going to crash in the White House, remember? And, um, and um, subdue it, but then you subdue them, but they know the, the plane was going to crash anyway. Now they were going to die, but at least they saved other people from death. Okay, so I'm saying when far more dangerous times than 9-11, right, um, uh, I don't know who is depending on a man to secure them or to make them safe, but not me. I'm not. I want to get back to the scripture. The Bible said, I told you last week, I said Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar what state of mind he was in when he lay on his, be on his bed. He told him what he was thinking about. He told him the dream, why, why God gave him the dream. And he saw the changes coming down, down. And finally, he saw a stone cut out of the mountain without hands. That means it had nothing to do with human beings. Okay? It was a miracle. Excuse me. Something divine. Excuse me. Cut out of the mountain. Notice it was not a metal, right? <clears throat> and it was not clay. 
because clay is useless. Especially when it dries up, it just falls apart. It was rock. It was a stone. It was solid. Right? Cut out without hands. And that is what broke the image. And he explained to him, he said, and in the days of these kings. Now, what is he really saying? Does he say he's saying that that it happened in the gold empire or brass, silver? No, he's just saying in the times of these kings coming down, that God will set up a kingdom. Now, we want to go over to Daniel chapter 7 and see some more of what the Lord said about this. Let me make sure that this is right because I don't want this camera to miss what I'm talking about. Okay. In Daniel chapter 7, it spoke about four beasts and each of these beasts represented one of those metals, right? The first beast was the lion, that represented the gold. Then came the bear, the bear represented the silver. Then came the leopard, the leopard represented the brass or the bronze. Then came the beast that he had no idea what on earth it looked like, but it had ten horns. That one represented the iron. Okay? Now, all of those beasts had something in common. The fact is that they were carnivorous. They were hostile. They were dangerous. Okay? <clears throat> they were dangerous. And they were not animals that, well, you would want to see 